So in a week full of some, I think, big notable wrestling uh, news and headlines, another one of those items that was certainly out there that generated some discussion and some buzz were the reports about Brock Lesnar and his contract situation with WWE, meaning that he's no longer under contract. Brock Lesnar is a free agent. His services are open and available to the highest bidder which certainly spun some different thoughts and theories about what could happen, where he could go next, you know, the inevitable questions about, could he do a fight at UFC? Is it going to be Cormier or could it be somebody else? Could he go to AEW? Will Tony Khan make that call? Will he just kind of go away for a long time, which some people might prefer? Will he just wait until closer to WrestleMania and, you know, Vince will give him an offer he can't refuse, and then he'll be back and doing the part-time gig again. You know, lots of different scenarios to, to work through. So I wanted to take some time and kind of talk through a couple of them and kind of give my thoughts and impressions of each and what I think will ultimately happen with this whole situation. Now, before I do that, let me just say, you know, life is about one thing above all else, and that is leverage. Money is leverage. Your networks, your connects, nepotism, leverage in relationships. There are two parties, whether it is man, woman, whether it is two chicks, whether it is two dudes, does not matter. It's all about leverage. One party has it, the other one doesn't. And the one that has it makes all the rules. The one that has leverage has all the power. So you want as much as possible in your life to have as much leverage as you possibly can. It's like when you go shopping for a car. Why do people with good credit get better deals? Why do they get better financing terms? Why do they get better interest rates? The ability to stretch out payments longer, no money down, you know, these types of things. Dealer incentives, manufacturer incentives thrown at them. Is it just strictly because they're lower risk and more likely to pay the loan back? No. It's because it's about competition. If you got somebody sitting at your freaking dealership with a 780 credit score, you know if you don't close the deal and they say they're looking for a new car, they're going to go somewhere else and somebody is going to give them a new car. So especially knowing how ridiculous the car business can be, as a result, they're going to be dropping pants and trial as much as possible to try and get that customer with the 780 credit score their car before they go somebody else and drive that car. It's leverage. It's absolutely leverage. It's the number one thing that matters. And Brock Lesnar has leverage. He doesn't have to do anything. If somebody really wants him, that's cool. Make me an offer. You want to know my price? Here's my price. What do I want? Here's what I want. Because I'm just as comfortable sitting there on the ranch or wherever the hell he is now, Minnesota, North Dakota, I don't know, and enjoying life with Sable and his kids, whatever. You know, he's just as comfortable doing that as making a bunch of money for limited appearances. Like, I wish I had that type of leverage in life that Brock Lesnar does. A lot of you either do or should wish you had that type of leverage that Brock Lesnar does in life. He's got enough F you money, he don't have to shit the rest of his life if he don't want to, let's keep it real. So, as a result, I can't hate on him for that. Cannot hate on him for that at all. Obviously, there's gonna be questions about UFC and whether or not you know Dana White will pony up the dough to sit there and bring him into the fold. And I think, you know, that could be a possibility, but you're talking about with a guy like Lesnar, like you're bringing him in to fill a stadium and sell pay-per-views at a time where so many millions of Americans that a year ago were not unemployed are now unemployed and you don't have full arenas everywhere. I guess this is really the best timing to bring in a guy like Brock Lesnar. It doesn't mean that the appeal's not there for him. Talk about Dana White, or maybe even Brock. It does not mean 
that there certainly wouldn't be interest or potentially even mutual interest. You know, at the end of the day, Brock Lesnar is a shoot wrestler, a shoot fighter at heart. You know, he doesn't just do that for the money. But he does that because he has a passion and a love for doing it. Cool. He's got the talent to do it. I ain't got no hate for him on that. I just don't see right now where UFC really makes a whole lot of sense for him. I just don't. I can certainly be persuaded in the comments if you feel differently, but I, I just don't really see where that seems like it's very viable uh, for either party or really makes business sense for either party. Uh, which then brings you to AEW. And let me be clear here. Tony Khan has one responsibility in all of this. He must reach out to Brock Lesnar or his representatives. He must make that call. He must. Even if it is just a phone call to say, Hi Brock, how are you doing? We would love to have you in AEW someday. If you're interested, please let us know. Or if he goes and sits there and grows some brass ones that just starts trying to talk turkey with Brock Lesnar. Either way, bottom line, for a company like All Elite Wrestling, at a moment in time where they're at in their show's history and their company's history and their brand's history, they'd be doing themselves an incredible disservice if they did not at least make the call to Brock Lesnar. Because even just the semblance of reporting of they made the call, they're potentially interested, they're looking to make him an offer, establishes them as a little bit more of big league players, gives them a little bit more credit and credibility just by association. You think those things don't matter. They do. And we know they do. Now, in no way, shape, or form does that mean I think that all elite wrestling should be rolling out the red carpet for Brock Lesnar, breaking the bank for Brock Lesnar, or even really bothering to bring him in. Because if you look at all elite wrestling, I just don't know that it's a great fit for him. Like when you look at it from a wrestling standpoint, like he has this kind of funky relationship with Vince, but there's kind of like the alpha and alpha relationship with Vince, but they also have a certain level of respect and understanding and familiarity and comfort with each other. You'd be talking about having to build a whole new relationship with Tony Khan and all the EVPs and everybody involved with AEW. Then you're talking about Brock having years of familiarity. And, you know, you think of this second run was four times plus as long as the first damn one. You think about it, it was really eight year run the second time around, even if it was part time, still lasted over eight years. And you, you look at this run of this length of time, you know, there's a lot of comfort level there for Brock. He knows what he's getting out of the WWE machine. He knows what he's getting out of the WWE leadership. The WWE talent, the WWE production, WWE television, I can go on and on and on. He understands the brand. He understands his place in it. He knows how he fits in, where he fits in, what his job is. Now you go to AEW, it's a whole different ball game. And in the case of Brock Lesnar, not necessarily for the better. Like, how does he really fit into their approach and their style? And you could say, well, you bring him in and he's a little counterculture to it and it's necessary and it brings new eyeballs and it probably would for them for the time being. But eventually, as you found out, eventually with WWE as well, having Brock is one thing, but you got to have the credible, believable, noteworthy dance partners with him and the credible, believable, interesting, compelling stories to go along with that. Otherwise, you're just going to get diminishing returns. And that's eventually what WWE got out of Brock Lesnar were diminishing returns. You bring him into an AEW, like, we have to have some real talk here. Who are you actually going to put him into a program with? Who are you actually going to put him into a feud with right now that would be ready? Let's say you wanted to bring in Brock first of the year. You said, hey, we want to bring you in for a couple of months. You know, every other week, every two weeks, every three weeks, something like that. Who in the hell are you going to have him work his first program with? And please don't say Moxley because that's a lazy way to go. And frankly, we know a few years ago that was tried and that didn't really work. Like who is really there on a similar enough level that is physically believable enough, that is able to tell the right type of story that stylistically matches up and makes sense? There just aren't a lot of people. There just isn't. 
And you're going to say some names in the comments probably that I would, if I, you told me them in person, I would laugh in your damn face and clown you for it because you know it's true. And you might say, well, then why are you saying, Jeff, that Tony Khan should make the call to Brock Lesnar? Because he owes it to the talent. He owes it to the company to absolutely 100% make that call. It's just like when a Tom Brady becomes available on the free agent market. You might not even have any interest with in him, but you might have a chance. You might not have interest because you think there is no chance. The bottom line is, is if you're not established and settled at the quarterback position and Tom Brady becomes available, you must explore the option. You must make the call. If the call ain't answered, the call ain't answered. But you have to make the call. If AEW didn't, shame on them. If they did and nothing comes of it and he has no interest, cool, no big deal. At least they can say they tried. I just, like I said, on so many different levels, I just don't think Brock Lesnar works there right now. And you guys deep down know that that's true. Like to me, the two most compelling options for Brock are retirement, at least semi-retirement for a while, while, um, or wait a little longer for more of the COVID stuff to blow over. Eventually it will someday. We know it will. And then when it does, Vince is going to come to the table Come with some type of massive offer. We're going to be one of those guys. Who, I gave him enough. He would come to feel us. And Brock's going to sign on the dotted line and going to be back working, you know, very part time for the WWE. And you can't blame him. Like right now, I just don't think there's any need for Brock Luster to do anything. I don't know why he would really want to. He would actually be doing himself a disservice from a leverage perspective. I think it's best he does sit out a few months. Tank it easy the rest of the year, Chief. You know, wait until January, February, especially WWE we're talking about here, because you know that's where his heart ultimately belongs. Just wait until we see how much the NFL kicks Raw's ass in the ratings down even more. See how much that company is struggling with that Raw brand come January and as you're heading into the Royal Rumble and then WrestleMania season. You know, if you're Brock Lesnar, why would you come back now? We're in another three months. Maybe you're starting to get more fans in the arenas. The company's starting to make a little more money. But at the same point in time, from a ratings and attention standpoint, they're very desperate. You know, you could be waiting three, four, five months and setting yourself up even better financially to take the same deal that you would have in September or October. I just don't see any need for Brock Lesnar to rush. I also don't see any need for him to go to AEW, and I don't really see a fit there. Certainly could do the UFC thing, but I just wonder how much that's worth it for either party right now. I just think Brock is one of those guys that has leverage, but at the same point in time, nothing really makes sense for him right now. And that's okay. He got himself leverage. More power to him. I'm sure we'll see him back somewhere at some point in time. I wouldn't be surprised to see him come back to WWE around WrestleMania season. You know, like it's still the thing to me. The most logical thing is, well, now that Paul Heyman's with Roman Reigns, our new hero, our new top babyface, um, now you can bring Brock Lesnar in. And, you know, it could be uh, Heyman client versus Heyman client. Like, you know, you could find something else for him to do. We could have him try and get revenge on a Drew McIntyre. Let's say if Drew was still the champion at WrestleMania. Like, I think the table just sets itself up better for something for him. Come WrestleMania, I would expect to see Brock Lesnar back in the WWE at some point in time before WrestleMania. It certainly could be wrong. I uh, would be absolutely floored if I saw him fighting in the UFC in the next few months. I would be flabbergasted and shocked and stunned if they ended up finding out that he signed with AEW. To me, it's either Vince or the farm at this point in time. And eventually, cooler heads will prevail. There will be enough leverage exercise to where the pot is sweet enough and Brock Lesnar will get off the damn farm and he'll work part-time for WWE again.